This morning I'm going to prepare some pieces of tomo nagara. It's important that you cut the, the tomo from a, a decent piece of stone. Uh, the better the stone, the better the tomo nagara. So it should be a good fine grit. A corner can be missing or something like that, but it's important that the quality of the stone be high enough to represent the best quality tomo nagara. So from here, I'm going to set aside a few of these pieces. This is a piece of asagi, and I'm going to first take down this little rough corner there. Okay, the corner's gone. Now I'm smoothing the edge side of this tomo. One side's done. This is a 400 grit atoma plate, so the cutting action is really fast. And you can see an asagi will give off a yellow to green yellow type slurry. Okay, so that's the two sides. I'll leave the ends the way that they are. But I do want to camper the corners, so 45 degree is fine. all the way around. Okay, so that gives us a nice working edge, top side and the back. So the next step would be to take a stone like this, and I have another one prepared right here. Uh, I set mine up in a stone holder, which helps quite a bit. And take a fine toothed hacksaw, cut a groove down as close to the center as you can, just a reasonable, reasonable depth, you can re-depth them as the stone gets worn out a little bit. So you have now a groove in the stone. See if we can. So then we're going to take the stone, and I use the edge of the atoma. You just engage the groove on the edge, and you're creating another 45 degree cambered edge. Twist it over, rinse it off, and that's the deal right there. So you've got a nice even edge with corners that won't break off from the groove. The edges here are cambered, so those won't break off either or create small particles. You might want to round off the corners of the stone a little bit. And that should do it. So that, therefore, when you get a, a relatively hard uh, awasi dough, you can raise a slurry. That's a combination of the Tomo Nagra stone and the base stone. That's the ideal slurry. It's a mixture of the two. Okay, there's one little um, effort there. Next, I'll take another stone, this is more like an Asagi, I mean uh, a Kita, a piece of Kita stone. I'll go through the same deal here. You can see right away there's a softer stone and the amount of slurry that's left on the Atma plate is uh, deposited really quickly. Okay, so I've cambered all the corners here and the sides. Put a few more passes on the face. Okay, that's looking good, and I'll do the corners.
bring the hacksaw back into place. And just cut a groove right down the center there. Rinse that off. So then we've got another tomonagura. This one's made up of uh, a softer material. Let's bring back in our base stone. This would be a level 5 minus base stone. But with this softer tomo, you can see how quickly the slurry raises. Now, this would be another matched tomo. This would also be considered a matched tomo. It depends on how much slurry you want to derive from the base stone as opposed to the tomo. Okay, now I have another uh, piece of awasido here. This is a gray stone. It's almost like a gosu. Get rid of that um, tea to slurry. And this slurry here is going to be a, a darker, greener type slurry. Um, on a stone like this, I'm even going to camber the uh, the back edges a little bit. And I'll smooth up the side. Both sides. Okay, that was pretty easy. Bring my saw back into play here. This tomo even feels harder under the saw. Engage those that groove. Twist it around. Okay, so stone tomo like this with this type of base stone, of course, is going to react differently as a, a match. I can see that this stone, base stone, and this tomo probably are very close to being even in hardness. And although it's not so quick to raise a slurry, the slurry is going to represent more of the base stone, which I feel is a plus. So that's just a little sideshow here, how to make or form up a tomonagra and what some of the matching possibilities might be.